Hello, welcome to Penelope's Chinwag, a slice of my life this week. And first of all, I must say thank you for your beautiful comments I received last week. Oh, they were heartfelt and I felt quite moved at times. Heather and I, we were so touched by them. It was, it was really lovely. I feel so grateful. And thank you for sharing my little corner of YouTube. So what is it about this week? Well, I'm looking at things I should be doing. You know that controlling parent? First of all, I'll introduce myself. I was a counsellor for the NHS for 20 odd years. And so, yeah, I think in counsellor terms. And should or must are definitely words that I don't use. I mean, they come in my head and we would say, well, that is controlling parent who's saying you should or must. I'm looking at material here because I should get, be getting on with my... Uh, quilt that I'm making for my new great-grandson who's due in February. However, I don't want to <laughs> and my crafting is my joy and so I craft whatever I fancy doing. So this week I'm going to show you what I fancy doing and I'm going to show you what I fancy doing this afternoon because I've got a little couple of hours to myself. So should or must, they're words that, yeah, we don't use. It's best to say what I'd like, what I need, what I want. And what I want to do is not pick up this fabric, which is the fabric for my new baby's uh, quilt. I don't want to. I just don't want to. But I know that I'm going to wake up one morning and go, Vumpf, I want to get that done. And that's the day I'll do it. But not today. What I want to do today is something different. It's such a beautiful sunny day here. I've got the heating on because I need it on. It's a bit chilly indoors and it's a bit too chilly for the conservatory. But I'm up in my crafty corner and I'm looking out the window. I can see the sea and I can see Pete. He's up there mowing all round where the chickens are. Of course, they're shut in at the minute due to avian flu. But... Um, up there you know I want it neat kept neat and tidy so that's where he started often he'll start down here and work up there but this time he started up there and he'll work down I think tomorrow's going to be a nice sunny day too so hopefully he'll get the next bit of lawns cut it's too much to do in one day for him now so I've forgotten what I've said now I've forgotten where I'm going so that's what Penelope's chin wag is really is a chit chat it's, it's a chin wag. Do you do that with your friends? Start a conversation. What were we saying? Oh, it'll come. So my brother's coming to visit next week, as is my daughter, who we call it up the line. She lives about an hour away. She's coming to visit on Wednesday with her my husband. My brother's coming for the weekend with his children. Not all of them. His eldest daughter lives in LA. His eldest son lives in near Cork I think in Ireland which is the other side of Ireland to Dublin where my brother lives um, his next eldest daughter has just moved to London and so he's coming to visit my mum and me and I suspect to see how his daughter's settling in she's going to be living in Wembley which um, some of you may know from football so that'll be nice to have her here. And so he's bringing his next eldest daughter and his two young sons. He's got two young boys. They're something like, oh, 12 and 14, something like that. So they're coming early. He's getting the six o'clock plane, I think, from Dublin. So he's going to be arriving early next Saturday and staying over till the Sunday and then visiting his daughter in Wembley. So... I'm preparing what I'm going to be making for him, what I'm going to be feeding them all. And one of the things I decided to make is a fruit cake. And some of you may know that I have acquired an air fryer. I didn't want an air fryer. I thought, I don't, I don't eat fried food. I don't want an air fryer. But of course, I was very much mistaken because an air fryer... Is, is like a little mini oven. Of course it does fry, it fries beautifully, 
but it also bakes and roasts and goodness knows what else. It does everything. It's nothing like a microwave. And so it's saving us a lot of money because when you put anything in the oven, you have to heat it up beforehand and it takes a while. So I'm making a fruit cake for my brother. Now, when I look in Mary Berry's book, it says it takes about, oh, I don't know, between three and four hours in the electric oven. But in my air fryer, it takes one hour, 40 minutes. And that's what it did, one hour, 40 minutes, and I put the skewer in and it came out dry. So first of all, I soaked some fruit that I had. Now this is the second time I've made this cake. The first time I had visitors uh, who were staying with me and it was delicious. It went down a treat. And I just, well, I used what I had really. It's, a, it's basically the same, but a little bit different each time. So if you haven't got that much, then change it and put something else in for instance last time I put in a hundred grams of ground almonds I looked in the cupboard I didn't have any so they didn't go in but what I did do overnight I soaked 500 grams of fruit now last time I did it in brandy because I had brandy this time I had sherry so I soaked 500 grams of fruit and it was a mixture of sultanas, raisins and currants and 200 grams of glacé cherries. I buy the uh, dark cherries. You can get very pink ones and you can get very dark ones. Buy the dark ones, rinse them under a tap to get all that sugary coating off, all that syrup off and yeah, rinse them. So I added that and then I added two pieces of ginger just because I love ginger and I could. I love ginger. I, you know, I buy it in the bottles. Stem ginger in, um, in, in its own juice. So I soaked that overnight in a glug, a good glug, till it was all nice and moist of sherry. But as I say, you can use anything you like. I then mixed together 200 grams of dark brown sugar with 200 grams of butter. Now I do know that last time I only had light brown sugar and it was beautiful. But this time I did, I had bought the dark brown sugar. So 200 grams of each. To that I added one teaspoon of mixed spice and a quarter of teaspoon of salt. I then added a glug, about a teaspoon or a good glug, you know, of vanilla essence. Uh, not vanilla essence, vanilla extract. A tablespoon of marmalade and two tablespoons of black treacle. Last time I had molasses, this time Pete bought me treacle. So it was treacle. And then I mixed four eggs in with it. I put 225 grams of plain flour and mixed it up and then I put, put the fruit in and mixed that right round. I lined a tin just round the sides with paper, cut a circle, pop that in the bottom and then I put it in my air fryer on 130 bake. And I put it on, you can only put it on for an hour. So after that hour, I then put it on for another 40 minutes. I tested it, might be 45, might be 40. I think last time it was 45, this time it was 40. Came out beautifully, it really did. So have a go if you fancy it. Now that'll keep three months in, uh, in a tin, wrapped up but I'm just going to keep it till next week. Probably I should cut it before my brother comes because I know my son-in-law is coming on Wednesday. He loves fruitcake and my daughter doesn't like it. So I shall probably give him a quarter and then it'll be there for my brother. I've made a list of what else I'm making him, but I'll tell you that next time. And uh, yes, if you've got an air fryer, try that. 
I put it in an 8 inch tin because I've got a large air fryer but I know some of you have got a small one and it would do just as well in a 7 inch tin so just keep your eye on it basically so yes that's a slice of my life oh the other thing was I was watching TV this week and Bill Bailey uh, some of you may know him but he narrated um, about animals that have a symbiosis with other animals or other creatures. And one of them was about a sloth. And I really, I was interested. Here's my sloth that I knitted, as you know. Well, if you've been watching me, if you're a new viewer, I've knitted these animals. I'll tell you from where. I'll write it on the, you know, I'll tell you from where because I'm going to show you what I'm knitting next. This is my sloth. Edward and um, Anne said when she visited oh they're so gorgeous in real life and they really truly are and uh, little Tommy he loves them well everybody loves them this this sloth lounges about but I was rather glad that I gave him this green of pajamas because Bill Bailey said that and actually one of my viewers did say the week that I put him up Thanks to its damp fur, algae helps him because algae gr goes, gr well, algae grows on sloths and gives them a green appearance. So I'm rather glad he's got a great bit of a green appearance because obviously the algae is starting to, to but yeah, he's attracting it. So sloths get covered in this green algae. It helps, because they live in the trees, you know, it helps them blend in. And there they are, slothing around in the trees, green with this algae. Now, the algae is nutritious and it attracts, it, Bill Bailey said, its own admirers. I'm, I'm, I took notes, so I'm having to look at those. Um, and the admirers, amongst other insects, are moths and on the television they showed you all these little moths on the sloth in this algae and they said once a week well a snail would be seen to hurrying but once a week the sloth goes down from the tree and he ambles along the floor and he does poop poopading poopading he only does that once a week and what happens is he's got this call of nature so down he goes and these little dung heaps the moths that are attracted to his algae they're attracted to his dung as well and they lay their eggs in the dung they because they've been in the dung they fly back up with him when he goes back up the tree and they bring all these little deposits of the algae, of the dung, back up and the algae loves it and starts to grow even more. So we've got al sloths, algae, helping him to camouflage himself. The moths are attracted to the algae. He has to go and poop once a week they follow him down lay their eggs thank you very much mr sloth and then they all go back up to the tree the moths bring up particles of the dung and the algae loves it and grows isn't it fantastic i just thought how marvelous that was but i felt rather guilty that he didn't have any moths or algae around him but obviously something's working because we can see you're a little bit green. But he's happy here anyway. Yep. So he doesn't leave piles of poop. Well, am I getting a bit silly now? But uh, he's got his slippers and dressing gown on. Oh, oh, everybody, everybody loves him. I'm knitting this for my granddaughter, Lois, Tommy's mum. I'm sure you know her if you're a regular viewer. If not, she's my granddaughter. 
and she's got a little boy to, called Tommy who will be a year right at the end of December and I said to her would you like that I think it's a young person's jumper isn't it oh yes please Nan so every row well it's a 36 row pattern and so it takes a little bit of concentrating but here's the back I'm knitting it in this wool that's like cotton wool. It's um, Adria Phil and a, and it's twenty five percent alpaca, twenty five percent wool, and fifty percent acrylic. And there it is. There's the back. Can you see that? Oh yeah. So you can see how it's going to be short and boxy. That's what she wants. So I've got the back done. That was an interesting way of knitting those. I mean, normally we cast off, cast off, cast off. These are short rows, German short rows. I've never done German short rows on the shoulder before. So that was new for me. I mean, it's very simple. I was in the mood to do that, so I did it. What else was I in the mood to do? Oh, I know. I know. I finished peach socks last week and I thought, you know, I've got these four little four little bits of wool left over. And when I measured them from socks, previous socks, when I measured them, they amounted to 75 grams that I'd used, 25 grams that I hadn't used. I had four lots and something like that anyway you know what I'm like well if you've watched me you know what I'm like with maths anyway it all works out that that winding those into four little balls I've done it twice I'm going to knit um, and I was in the mood I just knitted the cuff but I'm going to knit and use those walls you know they would be fine it, but in, well, it, Pete you only knit, you wears these socks now and I just thought they'd all blend or, They'd all blend and he can wear them indoors if he doesn't want to wear them out, but mostly indoors anyway. So that's what I've been doing, starting another sock. However, I woke up this morning and thought, what I fancy doing is starting my chimp. He's been in this bag languishing, ready to start. I mean, you can see chimp started, no date. I made it. I love this. Oh, it's gorgeous, isn't it? I made this quite some time ago. And I'm using the Knitted Wild Animal Friends. And here's a little selection. Not By no means all of the selection. I love the teddy. But I love the chimp. There he is on the front. I knitted the sloth from this book. So I'm right in the mood this afternoon. Pete's popping out. Uh, he's going to have a nice massage after all his gardening. And I'm going to start the chimp. I've got all ready waiting in here. So that's what I want to do. I have sorted a little bit of fabric out. It's like a Swedish fabric. And so I fancy I'm I'm just taking my time and I want to make a nice dish of macarons. I'll just nip off and I'll get the dish and I'll show you what I've done. Oh, here's the little dish and I want to fill it up. It's one of mum's old dishes and I love it. It's it's well, I did have a few made, but they've all been given away as presents. And I like to embroider some, but I'm not in the mood, so that's that. I do what I'm in the mood. Here's my original one. Do you remember I sent off for the kit? And I just sent off for the kit just to see if I could do it, to see if I liked it. And I did. And I've showed a few friends how to make them and they like it too. It's a very relaxing thing to do. Anyway, I've made another one. Whoopsie. And it's a Peter Rabbit one uh, with little beads on. Can you see? They're, they're lovely beads. 
Heather's sister in Scotland, Sharon, she gave me the beads and uh, they're, they're lovely. And then the other side, I put little black and white beads and grey. And what did I put inside? Oh, a couple of little bees. When you make them, you have to make sure that you don't make that too puffy because you want to put something in there. So, yeah, you know, you need to have that. It's surprising how much you can get in there. Just a little tip that I worked out. And then I did, oh, there'll be one side of um, a couple. Well, I might put the little... I'll see. So um, that's what I'm working on. Just when I fancy it. That's my motto. Do what you fancy. But I have got that quilt to make. And I have got a bag for my granddaughter-in-law to make. And she's coming to visit in January. So I need to get that done. But I don't want to do it at the minute. I think because I'm cooking and preparing to entertain. And I just want to sit and relax and do what I want to do. So I want to make a chimp. So that's what I'm going to do. So before I sat down, had my afternoon cup of tea, I thought I'd come on and say hello to you. And believe it or not, I didn't think I'd be able to do a chinwag this week because I didn't think I'd have anything to talk about. <laughs> but it turns out I did. So my little film this week is, um, it's not one of nature. Uh, it's one of my family. It is a slice of life. And Anne, as I've said, came to visit and she was my dad's, well, she still is, my dad's sister. And she's 10 years older than me. So we, we were saying, I'm 73, she's 83, and my mum's 96. And she was my mum's bridesmaid when she was five. And they were reminiscing, you know, why not? Why not reminisce? It's a pleasant thing to do. We had a lovely afternoon together. Well, usually when I interview someone, I do ask them questions. I say, well, you know, this, that and t'other. But Anne and Mum sat down and I just said to Mum, okay, start. <laughs> and um, that didn't work very well because Mum didn't know what to say really well she said completely the wrong thing which I've left in and you'll see but we laughed and laughed so it was a a good mistake but anyway that's just filling you in who Anne was I'm going to sign off so it's sure indulgence on my part to show you a slice of my life this week thank you very much for sharing and um, I'll see you next week after my brother's visited because then I have something to talk about so I'll see you then. Take care. And if you're a crafter, enjoy your crafting. Bye-bye. She sat on the hair stairs of your nan's house and cried. And great nan said, come on, pull yourself together. Yeah. You've got a lot to live for. Yeah, yeah, it's harsh, isn't it? Don't spoil this day. Yes. You've uh, got nothing to cry about. Oh. I was crying because my mum was there. Yes, crying. exactly. And the war was still on. Oh, yes, and the war was still yeah. on. Who knew what was going to happen tomorrow? You, you're, oh. You made my dad so welcome, it was like just really smashing. Oh, very lovely. That's so gorgeous. Aren't they amazing, yeah, these yeah, things? Yeah. I can't believe I've just got it in my hand now after seeing it on the thing. It's beautiful. And then she tells you what fabric that, and that would be so handy for me with my little with the rings. earrings. That is lovely. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Thank you. And thank you for this too. This is gorgeous. I will. It's an awful lot. Look, I'm, I'm so happy to sit with you. With these what are you saying? I love them so much. Oh, you know, that, you know, baby, show you me. Thank you. Oh, you. Oh, really so, he's like he wants to give it, but then he's. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say? Oh dear, I can see.
Have you got a voice? Dada. Dada. Oh, say dada. Clever you say dada? boy. And you say dog, don't you? Dog? you say dog? Eva, look at me. Dog? Very good. <laughs> Is that what you say? <laughs> dog. And we clap hands. Yeah, we clap hands. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Clever boy. Dada. 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 <laughs> What are you looking at? He always frowns, doesn't he? Just he, when he because like that something. when he's serious. Look, he's, oh, he can see all the toys over there. Oh, yes. Why are they there and not Why are they there? Yeah. 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 Oh, he wants it. Tommy. He wants it. Here we are. Yeah. Good boy. Yeah, he say thank you. Yes, he said, yeah. why are they with her? They and usually with trousers me. are falling down. Well, um, you were married to my husband's brother. No, you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really true. That's a good one. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> that was so real rehearsed, Mum. <laughs> that was so well rehearsed. <laughs> it has to be rubbed out, Eva, because it's too so rubbish. Oh, stop it. Oh, you're making me well, laugh. Well, how do you know Anne? Anne? Yeah. Was my bridesmaid. Your bridesmaid? Is yeah. she a member of your family, Mum? She's my <laughs> husband's sister. Ah, I've so got I've it right. known her many, many years. Yes. And we had <laughs> a lovely wedding. Yes, you've talked about that and, wedding in yes, some of the blogs and, and mum, and some of the videos. Mum got all the lovely food that she could because everything was rationed then during the war. Yes. But you never held it against me, Eva, the fact that you had to take me on your honeymoon when I was mm. only five or six years well, of age. That's right, because the war had ended and you hadn't really had a proper holiday. We hadn't had, Ron and I hadn't had a honeymoon. So we we were able to go to Aunt M who in lived Cornwall. in Cornwall. We were able to go there then because the war was was over, and she had a lovely house in in Cornwall, and she invited us down because we hadn't had a honeymoon. But then your dear father mm. said, "Well, Anne, Anne baby Anne has to baby go Anne as well. Has a holiday, <laughs> so you have to take Anne." I've been troublesome ever since too. How are you? <laughs> We had to take you on our honeymoon. Oh, and, then, and then when you had since, Penny, you had yes. Penny, you were living just around the corner yes. from where I lived. Yes. And yes. Uh, I was still only young then and we used to go for long walks yes. together and I used yes. to complain about the long walks you would take me on. But we we had a, a lovely relationship yes, then. And do. then, of course, you'd take me away on holidays with yes. you sometimes and that kind of thing. Yes. And then I got very fond of Penny as she grew up. Uh, I remember one time I was working in the West End and uh, I took her up to, to the West End. I don't know if Penny remembers that. And I think I got a haircut. I definitely bought her a dress because I was so thrilled to be earning a bit of money that I could actually do something for her. We all need a hand to walk into the kitchen now. <laughs> <laughs> I have my walking stick with me. Yeah. And Eva and I can only see one another when we look close. We stay when close together. together. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Very yes. hard to see. and. Yes. Um, we have that same problem with our eyes. Yes. Yes. And we were yes. just saying, Penny, how we, we'd be able to remember things the way we couldn't before. You know, very often you forget yes. things that happen with the mm, lights, yeah. the videos and yes. the photographs. And we had such a small flat in Bruce Castle Court in um, you know Tottenham. And yet in Mum's Diary of 1958, you know, you, you came to stay I for the weekend. I think my teens, yeah. Well, Where did you put me? And that was I such a know. tiny front room. I mean, it was like a little box. I mean, Mum had made it lovely, but Mum was always entertaining, if you read that diary. Yes, we I didn't know. have many yeah. cupboards. No, <laughs> still not many cupboards. cupboards again. No. She's always going on about yeah. her cupboards. Oh. And then it was lovely when you did move out to Harlow. I remember oh. going out there on the Dear. bus. That Do green, it was a green bus yes. that went out there, yes. and oh, I thought that was wonderful because it was this yes. big adventure out in the country, yeah. you know. It was real country so, then, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, was lovely. I'm just so glad yes. to be here with you, Eva. Oh, it's, it's lovely it, to see you it, again. It, it, well, we'll see you again, yes. then, We won't leave it so long this time no. now. Hopefully, I'll pop over again. Yeah, yeah. that'll be taken to you. Yeah.